One of the primary processes that form many of the solar system's planets is known as volcanism. Every continent on Earth where we live has a volcano and volcanic activity has drastically altered the terrain over time. And now, as scorching magma swings about and gets ready to explode, the world's largest volcano has been seen to change within. What would happen should the volcano erupt and what is the likelihood of our survival? Let's find out. In January, the huge eruption of the Hunga Tonga Hunga Ha'apai volcano in Tonga in the South Pacific Ocean was comparable to an asteroid passing the Earth very closely from a volcanic perspective. The explosion was the largest one ever recorded by equipment and the largest eruption since Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines erupted in 1991. Ash fell over a vast area harming agriculture, fish stocks and infrastructure. 18.5% of Tonga's gross domestic products was lost in damage. The explosion caused the severing of submarine cables, which prevented Tonga from communicating with the outside world for several days. Further away, the blast generated a global shockwave and tsunamis that reached the coasts of Japan and North and South America. Thank goodness the eruption only lasted for around 11 hours. It would have had an impact on supply chains, the climate and food resources globally if it had continued longer, released more ash and gas, or occurred in more densely populated areas of Southeast Asia, close to a high concentration of crucial shipping lanes, electricity grids, or other crucial global infrastructure. The world is woefully equipped for such an occurrence, let alone the eruption of Mauna Loa, the planet's biggest active volcano. In terms of shape, Mauna Loa, which in Hawaiian means long mountain, is a shield volcano with broad rounded slopes. The volcano is 13,681 feet or 4,170 meters above sea level and makes up around 51% of Hawaii Island. But what makes it more stunning is that it rises from the ocean floor at an astounding 30,000 feet 9,144 meters higher than Mount Everest. The massive mountain actually causes the ocean floor to budge. Mauna Loa is nearly twice as large as the other Hawaiian islands put together in terms of landmass. The morphology of Mauna Loa is a result of its historical high volume flow eruptions, which produce lava capable of traveling great distances. According to the scientists, the majority of the volcano's surface has been covered by flows that have erupted during the last 4,000 years. Scientists think that Mauna Loa is waking up. Since last year, the Hawaiian peak has been shaken by an increase in swarms of tiny earthquakes, which has been accompanied by an increase in seismic activity there for months. These tremors might indicate that the world's biggest volcano is awakening which might trigger Mauna Loa's first eruption since 1984. You might be thinking, hey, wasn't there a huge eruption of the volcano in Hawaii just a few years ago? Isn't it sort of erupting right now? And yes, you are correct. Chloea has been actively erupting for many years, and in 2018 there was a significant eruption that destroyed an entire residential district, forced 2,000 people to flee, and added more than 800 acres of land to the Big Island. However, Klauea is not comparable to Mauna Loa. Klauea, Mauna Loa, Mauna Kea, Hualai and Kohala are the five individual volcanoes that make up the Big Island of Hawaii. The remaining volcanoes are still active, including a sixth one that is still submerged, the seamount of Loihi. Kohala is extinct, Mauna Kea is dormant and it hasn't erupted in thousands of years. The Pu'u crater of Kalawia, the most active volcano in the world, experienced continuous eruptions from 1983 to 2018. The largest mountain in the world and the largest active volcano, on the other hand, is Mauna Loa, which comprises up to half of the enormous island. 
The summit crater, named Mukawiawiu Caldera, has erupted 33 times since 1843, but neither eruptions nor active lava flows have been recorded since 1984. It is believed to have erupted once every six years over a longer period, the last 3,000 years. However, the volcano hasn't erupted since 1984, making this the quietest it's been since written records have been kept. The Pacific plates of the Earth's crust is slowly moving across a hot spot in the Earth's mantle by a few inches per year, which adds up to about 32 miles per million years. This movement is the cause of all this activity and, in fact, the entire existence of the Hawaii Island chain. It only took the lava from Mauna Loa's 1950 eruption three hours to reach the Kona coast, which was 30 miles away. Large earthquakes preceded the 1950 eruption and another destructive eruption in 1984, providing experts with the information to forecast the volcano's behavior. As we have mentioned, Mauna Loa is a shield volcano, a type of volcano that poses a particular hazard to the area since its lava is less viscous and will flow more rapidly and farther. In 1950, over the period of 23 days, almost 280,000 cubic kilometers of lava spilled from Mauna Loa, damaging infrastructure. Volcanoes and the disasters they cause, such as tsunamis and earthquakes, are examples of natural hazards to society that are widely monitored but can strike cities without any notice. The biggest city on the Big Island, Hilo, was in danger from lava flows during the vast and violent Mauna Loa eruption in 1984. It was fortunate that the lava stopped only seven miles from the city. The Hawaiian Volcano Observatory at the USGS is urging locals to review their personal eruption plans now that Mauna Loa is erupting once more. Having an eruption strategy in place beforehand aids in an emergency, much like preparing for hurricane season. Currently, the seismic activity on Mauna Loa is insignificant compared to the eruptions of 1984 or prior years. But considering the ongoing activity on Mauna Loa and other Hawaiian volcanoes, it is much more an issue of when and not if these volcanoes will erupt once more. It's important to note that we have no way of knowing where a lava flow might originate. The lava flows from the 2018 Kilauea eruption didn't come from the famed crater. Instead, they came from several fissures that appeared in a residential area. Therefore, it begs the question, what happens if the Yellowstone volcano erupts? More so since Yellowstone National Park is perched atop an active supervolcano. Whether you know it or not, Yellowstone has a long history of volcanic eruptions and it's rife with volcanic activity and evidence. Should the Yellowstone volcano ever erupt, a variety of things are possible. Numerous earthquakes would start to happen before any real eruption or intense volcanic activity. Volcanic eruptions and earthquakes are correlated with one another because an earthquake can change the Earth's crust enough to cause lava and magma to erupt. An eruption would happen soon after a great number of different earthquakes of all sizes and intensities. Given the volcanic history of Yellowstone National Park, it is challenging to estimate the size of an eruption. Although, there have been about 80 additional lesser eruptions during the lifespan of Yellowstone. Only three of these were supervolcanic eruptions. Whatever the size of the eruption, the volcano will blast up ash and debris along with lava and rocks. It's challenging to imagine the magnitude of a supervolcanic explosion. Many of us recall the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens, which sent ash as far as the center of the United States and smaller particles all over the world. However, the amount of ash and debris created by the Mount St. Helens eruption was only around a tenth of a cubic mile. What about the eruption of the Yellowstone volcano? 
According to historical data, Mount St. Helens produced much less debris than the earliest supervolcanic eruptions at Yellowstone, which happened millions of years ago. In fact, almost 900 cubic miles of debris and ash were produced by the three massive eruptions that created the three calderas in Yellowstone National Park. In light of this, it should be noted that if the Yellowstone volcano erupted at this strength today, over three to four feet of ash would fall on the nearby states of Montana, Wyoming, Colorado and Idaho and smaller amounts would continue to fall on neighboring states. At the very least, enough ash and debris would be created to cover the whole country of the United States in about an inch. Ash and debris don't seem like such a bad thing, do they? The falling ash is not soft like the ash from a campfire. Volcanic ash is extremely sharp. When viewed under a microscope, it resembles broken pieces of glass. If inhaled, the ash will rip apart your lungs and embed itself inside of you. Additionally, it only takes three to four feet of ash to completely damage infrastructure, buildings and modes of public transport. Many, many lives would be lost and air traffic would come to a complete stop. Even a small amount of ash can have fatal effects on the respiratory system, making driving hazardous and cause the death of several crops and animals, yet this amount of ash won't fall everywhere. A volcanic eruption would be easy to predict based on how many earthquakes it preceded. Although there are already a handful of earthquakes in Yellowstone National Park each year, they are nothing compared to the tremors that would precede a hypothetical eruption. Evacuations would be required because it would be clear that the park and the adjacent villages had been destroyed. Lava flows would assist the Yellowstone volcano to make its message if earthquakes weren't clear enough. Thankfully, lava flows can't spread as far as ash can, and blazing hot lava is most likely to harm a maximum of 50 miles of Yellowstone National Park. In contrast to blazing hot lava, there is one more unexpected consequence that volcanic eruptions have on our planet. An exponential drop in temperature. Given its possible scale, there is no way to predict the exact amount of ash and debris that will be discharged into the air during a Yellowstone volcanic eruption. For months, or possibly years after the eruption, the ash that is stuck in the stratosphere will remain suspended. The sun's energy will be largely blocked by ash and other volcanic gases. This will result in several years of below average temperatures and energy for plant growth. The most dangerous effect of a supervolcanic eruption will be finding food to eat because of the ash, lack of sunlight and cooler temperatures. The amount of photosynthesis that plants need to produce energy will decrease in the absence of sunlight. The animals that consume plants will be hungry and the extinction of animals will be another factor contributing to the decline in our food supply. No matter how powerful it turns out to be, a supervolcano eruption, the likes of which Yellowstone may conceivably create, will change the planet. However, while the next Yellowstone eruption will alter life on Earth for a while, Earth will still exist and there will be very likely an incredible warning window to get ready. That is one advantage of human intelligence. The most recent eruptions at Yellowstone would have come as a complete surprise to all of Earth's current life. It won't happen soon, giving us time to make preparations. Scientists can attempt to anticipate these eruptions, make preparations and alert the public, but as the Hawaiian proverb goes, Pele goes where she wants. All we can do when Pele begins to move is move out of the way and hope she gives us a warning. However, the largest volcano in our solar system is not Mauna Loa. Actually, the planet Mars has the largest known volcano in the solar system. 
Olympus Mons is its name and it rises about 27 kilometers above the planet's surface. The largest volcano in the solar system is Olympus Mons. The enormous Martian mountain stands over the plains in its immediate vicinity and may be waiting for its next eruption. Olympus Mons is one of a dozen major volcanoes, many of which are 10 to 100 times taller than their terrestrial counterparts that can be found in the Tharsis Montes region, close to the Martian equator. The highest of them all runs about 374 miles, that's 624 kilometers, or about as far as the state of Arizona, and rises 16 miles, 25 kilometers, over the plains below. Olympus Mons has a hundred times greater volume than Mauna Loa, the Hawaiian island chain that is home to the Earth's largest volcano and could fit inside its Martian equivalent. Olympus Mons rises three times higher than Mount Everest, which has a peak elevation of 5.5 miles above sea level and is the tallest mountain on Earth. Shield volcanoes also include Olympus Mons. The result is that the mountain seems low and squat with an average slope of just 5%. The volcano Olympus Mons is still quite young. Some areas of the mountain may only be a few million years old, which is youthful in the context of the solar system, despite the fact that it has taken billions of years to form. Because of this, Olympus Mons might still be an active volcano that could erupt. The tallest volcano in the solar system may also be home to rock glaciers, which are made up of ice-covered rocks. Such glaciers might result from snow and ice accumulations above the shield's base. Water ice might exist near the volcano's summit due to the surface dust insulation. These glaciers' tops, which could be as young as 4 million years old, may have ridges, furrows and lobes, as well as be covered with pebbles and boulders. Now it appears to be dormant. If there is still activity deep inside the volcano, it is unknown to planetary scientists, although no rovers have traveled to the Martian mountains as of yet. This hasn't stopped people from harboring exploratory fantasies. Therefore, until the first humans can visit the planet and conduct more thorough inspections, you may be able to at least visually explore the enormous volcano, while it might be some time before you can climb it physically. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.